Um, <clears throat> let's start with Jordan Davis. So Jordan Davis, uh, I had said for weeks that if they traded up for anybody, if it, 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 w- it would be within the top, it would be within that 10 to, to 14 range. Um, and it would probably be for Jordan Davis. He's a guy that has an extremely high ceiling because of his athletic ability, but his floor is also tremendous as well. As a matter of fact, I'd say he's got the highest floor in the draft because at worst, you know he's going to be a very, very good two-down run defender. You got your Mega Mag guys here with you on Birds 365. Appreciate you streaming in. While you're at it, hit that like button. We could use a little help from our streaming pals. And when we need help to talk about what's going on in the entire National Football League and maybe the EW, uh, we bring in Michael K from Pro Football Network. MK, how's your off season been? Been a minute. Yeah, it's uh, it's been busy. It's really been busy. I mean, obviously, covering the whole league has been kind of a learning experience as, as we go along. But uh, you know, John's seen me, I think, twice in the past week. So, you know, I've been yeah. local. It's like old times. Yeah. Um, and maybe there'll be some special stuff for Eagles fans down the road as well um, that we can't talk about, I guess, yet. But, uh, you know, it's you know, it's been good. I'm happy to be back with the Max. Yeah, I was, I, w- I was hoping to say something about that. But I'm going to keep that under wraps for now. I do want to direct everybody. Uh, Mike did a great piece at, at Pro Football Network where he was embedded uh, with the senior director uh, for Octagon, Octagon Football. Uh, go and work in the phones uh, during day three of the draft, which is always interesting because you have undrafted guys, so. Really interesting look. Everybody should check that out at, at profootballnetwork.com. But let's start with the Eagles, obviously, Mike. Um, how are we getting a lot of praise for, for day one? Loses a lot of volume in the draft, though. So there's still some needs out there, cornerback safety most notably. But your thoughts uh, about the Eagles draft? Yeah, I think day one was a situation where we know with Howie, if he really wants something – he will go up and get it. And I think that this was kind of putting a, like a a microscope on that. Um, Let's start with Jordan Davis. So Jordan Davis, uh, I had said for weeks that if they traded up for anybody, if it it would be within the top, it would be within that 10 to to 14 range. Um, And it would probably be for Jordan Davis. He's a guy that has an extremely high ceiling because of his athletic ability, but his floor is also tremendous as well. As a matter of fact, I'd say he's got the highest floor in the draft because at worst, you know, he's going to be a very, very good two down run defender. Um, And he's a guy who can take on double teams. And I think that's really important in a year where you have Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox, both in contract years. And you know that they can master three technique. They can rush one on one. Jordan Davis has to be double teamed. So if Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave are getting one on one assignments, that could be really good for the Eagles from a pass rushing standpoint. It also can get the most out of Josh Sweat. Um, I also think you can get a lot of, out of Brandon Graham with those one-on-one matchups. They're very hard to beat with their speed off the edge. I also think if you watch tape, like I tweeted this the other day, it was before day two of the draft. If you watch Nakobe Dean's highlights, every single highlight is Jordan Davis m- literally mo- yeah, yeah, moving the I box said, yeah. and allowing – Dean to kind of operate in space. And I think that's really important for the Eagles linebackers. We saw last year, the Eagles struggled mightily against the run because they had to have the safeties so high. This allows them to play the safeties high. If they want to, they're probably going to need to given the personnel that they have. Um, And so look, I think it's a slam dunk pick. I know that a lot of people don't really like the idea of drafting a run defender, but he's really a blank canvas as far as pass rushing goes. I think you know, if Tracy Rocker can develop a couple of moves, watch out um, because his his ceiling is so high. He's only 22 um, and he's got such natural gifts. His first step is ridiculous. Um, and so he's got like a ready made run defender right there. But on top of that, he's got so much to build upon. And I think that that's a huge thing. Then you talk about A.J. Brown. So they've done the first round wide receiver dance the last two years. They've hit. I mean, they've missed and they've hit. 
this was kind of the tiebreaker and saying, you know what, we're going to take this out of development hands and we're going to go get a, a true bona fide star. I think AJ Brown is a top 10 wide receiver in this league. Um, he's the biggest trade acquisition on offense that they've had since Jason Peters. Um, he's the best wide receiver that they've had since, you know, Macklin left town. Um, and frankly, you could argue that he's better than Macklin. So I, I think you, you're getting a guy who's only 24. He was the one to trade for. I know a lot of people made a, a big deal about Debo Samuel, but Debo Samuel, you have to like kind of adjust your offense. Yeah, every day. you got to. Yeah. is more of an X receiver who's going to complement Devontae Smith, who now moves to the Z spot, which is perfect for him because we know how fast he is off the line. We know his foot works awesome, but giving Devontae Smith that extra space is huge as the flanker. And I think, you know, he'll complement Quez Watkins very well, who now is going to move to the slot. I think. All three guys can play three different positions. That's good. Zach Pascal can do the same thing, um, which brings up questions, obviously, about Jalen Rager's future. Um, but I look, I, the, the day one I thought was a slam dunk. Day two, I understand the pushback on Cam Jer- uh, Jergens, but I do think he was he, – the thought process there was a lot like Landon Dickerson, where it's like you want to – redshirt him for a year but you know he's going to eventually play I mean we saw last year Jason Kelsey went out with injuries Nate Herbig could barely snap the ball and he said you know what screw it I'm going to go back out you can't do that to a center when you're when you're really trying to compete and really trying to contend long term and you're paying him 14 million dollars and what people don't really get in, in my opinion is that when you have a guy like Jason Kelsey and he's out and you don't have a guy who has comparable skill sets who's able to pull Jason Kelsey is the best pulling center I've ever seen. So it, 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 I think he's the best pulling center in the history of the league. But if you don't have a guy who can do even like half as well as him as a pulling center, your running game is shot because he's really, he and Jordan Maylotta are really what makes that running game go. And I think they saw to themselves, they said, you know what, if, if, the corners are off the board. The safeties are off the board. I tweeted out several times I would have traded back with that pick um, because that's what I would have done. But I understand why they said, you know what? Guy who's got a comparable skill set to Jason Kelsey, guy who's got great character, guy who's kind of quirky, who would fit the locker room, let's go after him. And then, look, everybody complained that it wasn't a Kobe Dean, and then they got him in the third round. And, and um, you know, everybody's saying the right things. I still think... I still think that he's going to be redshirted for at least part of the year. I think with that pec strain, you, yeah, maybe he can play in practice, but you probably don't want him taking a lot of contact early on. You have TJ Edwards, you have Kaiser White. Um, I'd expect if he does play, Kaiser White and him would rotate uh, inside because they are playing more of a three, four odd front. Um, and then TJ Edwards would be the green dot. And then, you, you know, similar to Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox, you're having White and Edwards battle for that extension. Well, Mike, uh, real quick before you jump in, Jody, because Nicole, sure. you, you you mentioned uh, the injuries. Have you heard anything? I know Joe uh, Shane and with the Giants talked about it a little bit, but I, I've heard the pack is not necessarily the bigger problem with other teams. It was the degenerative stuff with the knee and the shoulder. Did you hear any of that? Uh, yeah, I've heard that that was more of the concern than the pack. Um, I don't like, you know what? Everybody has different, you know, it's tough with medical, right? Like we're not yeah. in the room and, 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 and you don't want to just take what somebody says at face value with medical because they're not the doctor. Right. So yeah, um, yeah I do think there's some long-term concerns, but I think it's similar to, to Miles Jack. Remember Miles Jack yeah, had yeah. really bad knees and he's gone out and played pretty well throughout his career. The the Jaguars signed him to a long-term contract extension. He didn't miss a ton of time. Um, Linebacker is one of those positions too, especially if you're playing three, four, where you can kind of hide uh, guys a little bit. And, you know, we use in wrestling a bump card. I, I think a three, four inside linebacker spot is better for uh, someone like N'Kobe Dean. But I, I think his lack of size, so he's 5'11", um, he's more of a two down run defender, in my opinion, um, kind of played into it as well. I think he's extremely instinctual. I think he's a really good leader, got great character, all that stuff, but I don't know how I, I would feel about putting him in coverage at his size, um, with that history of knee injuries and, and obviously shoulder as well. 
Yeah, because the uh, Georgia Bulldogs got so picked apart by coverage with him being part of it this past year. <laughs> he, he, well, was, he was he was the man on the best defense in college football in the last decade. I, I don't see where the concerns come from because you stretch out his, and he's 5'11 and a half. Uh-oh, he's not going to be able to cover people, except he did for the last two years. Well, now, There's no Dallas Goddards out there. Yeah, even, I mean, my pushback the, is – yeah, my pushback on that is he's surrounded by talent. Like the Eagles, you know, it, it's it's an even playing field now. And I think, look, I, I'm a big fan of his. I think he's a good player. I'm not down, you know, downing him. But I do think that that was some of the logic, I guess, from the scouting and and teams. I mean, like I mean, he did in reality fall. So, oh, sure. Um, I think that that's something to to kind of look at. And then I think like the day two picks, I mean, you know, they got a really decent Sam linebacker prospect who's going to be a very good special teams player, essentially going to take over for Alex Singleton. And then the tight end, scary history of concussions, in my opinion. But, um, you know, obviously having that relationship with Hertz, it's worth taking a flyer. He's got, um, you know, he's a little bit undersized, but a little thin, but. You know, I think he compliments Dallas Goddard. I think he also compliments, you know, uh, Jack Stahl. So um, that works. He's another guy to kind of put in that Tyree, Tyree Jackson sort of mold. It's, you know, him and Noah Togiai and um, Richard Rogers all competing for that third tight Don't end. Don't forget Richard. Richard's Yeah, back. you can never forget. Yeah. <laughs> Still, the the on the really can't. And I'm with you on the Calcaterra thing because – Oh, he actually walked away from the game. The Kobe Dean just kept making tackle after tackle after tackle. But we have concerns about his health as compared to Calcutta. No, you're right about the tight end. Um, mentioned uh, we're going to see more 3-4 looks with the Eagles in this upcoming year. Certainly yeah, I'm, I mean, that's the precipice for, for bringing in a guy like Jordan Davis. Like, he's a true nose tackle. Like, you can use him as one zero technique i mean they're going to be a hybrid defense that's what they're going to be so you're going to see three four looks you're going to see four three looks there are very few teams that only run like one you know an odd or an even front but i do think you'll see a lot of three four concepts i think you'll see a lot of standing from the edge rushers pretty much because of who they have here i mean josh sweat can play three four outside linebackers so can brandon graham so can Derek barnett despite popular belief um you know, you're going to want to have your best players on there. And the best way to do that is to, you know, put uh, Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox to the outside of Jordan Davis and then have, you know, Josh Sweat and Brandon Graham rush. Like, you're not going to want to rotate that much. And when you do, it'll probably be on third down. You know, I, I think this team wants to be as multiple as possible. And I think that's why you saw so much investment in the front seven uh, compared to the secondary this offseason. All right, so let me ask you to make a little bit of a prediction here. Percentage of snaps, Hargrave, Fletcher, and uh, the newest addition, Davis. Jordan, da Jordan uh, Davis? Uh, yes. Uh, understanding health will dictate the number, but for the purposes of today's uh, projection, what do you think their percentage of snaps is going to be on the field between those three guys? I think Hargrave will be in the 70s. I think that um, Cox will be in probably the 50 to 60 range. And then Davis will make up the majority of the rest along with Milton Williams. How much do you think Milton's going to kick outside? Um, and we talk about there's a lot of depth on this defensive line now, Mike. Um, and the fact that, you know, there's a little redundancy now with Jordan Davis. I always say the dominoes fit into place because – JG has wanted that zero one technique guy. Now you have J Bond's a three technique, essentially Fletcher's a three technique, Milton's a three technique. Um, so that's a that's there's only so many snaps. So if Milton's going to get um, considerable playing time. It almost has to be outside. But then you start talking about Graham and Barnett and Reddick's here to rush the passer. I do think people get too caught up in 3-4 versus 4-3 because they want to be multiple. When Hassan, you know, presumably Hassan Reddick's going to be the same linebacker on first and second down, so you're going to have five-man fronts, essentially. Um, 
and then he'll 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 be the edge rusher with Josh Sweat. Who's inside then? Is it Brandon? Well, I think that's why you look at a three four and say, you know, you can put Hargrave at five technique, you can put Fletcher at three or Milton at three, and then you put because that's really what Hargrave is. Hargrave is is a true five technique that they're rushing as a three technique. So you he's not put, a, he's not a one. I know that yeah, he's that, not a that's zero. For sure. <laughs> um, so you have you have these guys up front, and I think look, I think there's a reason why they didn't go edge rusher in this draft is they have edge rushers, right? Like, and if you're rushing from a three, four, you're using Reddick as one of your outside rushers. So the rotation is really Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, and, and Derek Barnett. It's not, you know, Fletcher Cox, uh, Javon Hargrave, Jordan Davis, Milton Williams. Those guys are going to be on the field. I think, I think you want to be able to have as many, you know, fireballs as Andy Reid would put it and and just throw as much as you can. I think this is going to be a very package oriented uh, rotation. They're going to have specific situations that they want to use. And I, look, Hargrave, I mean, sorry, Gannon came in here. I mean, you and I both said it with this kind of defensive Sean McVay sort of vibe and being this creative guy, he didn't have the personnel to do that last year. Now he's getting a bunch of chess pieces that he can move. I think Hassan Reddick's going to be a massive signing for him and his ability to create and be different. Um, I think Jordan Davis gives you a lot of opportunities to create one-on-one matchups elsewhere. Um, And I think, you know, overall their secondary isn't great. So the, the idea of just mixing and matching front seven personnel has to, you know, serve as the insurance policy for coverage. And I think that's what they're planning on doing. All right, Michael, you may have already done this for yourself. If you have, I'll be very impressed. If not, I'm going to ask you to do it off the top of your head. If there are 64 starting safeties in the national football league, two per team. And yeah, I know situational substitution some teams add more safeties because of pass coverage some pull a safety off put an extra corner out there but starting with the premise that everybody's got two starting safeties so it's one through 64 where would you rank anthony harris and marcus epps on that top 64 safety list in the nfl as of right now Let's 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 push it to sixty six and say they're in that bottom third, because <laughs> uh, it's not great. Look, I was impressed by Marcus Epps last yeah, year. I, I, I don't know if he's a full time player, but he is a guy who can tackle. He's a guy who can cover. Um, I don't think ideally you want him as your starting free safety unless you're the Eagles PR people. Um, and I think you know. Look, Anthony Harris was rough last year. I was truly surprised they picked him over Rodney McLeod, but I guess Gannon had to have his guy. Um, They really need a free safety upgrade, and I I don't know where that's going to come from. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think Marcus Epps is their best safety, which is uh, good if you're a Marcus Epps fan. Bad if you're an Eagles fan, because that's a low bar, as Jody would say. But um, and then we talk about corner. Uh, Darius Slay was out there yesterday talking up Zach McPherson. He's ready. Uh, We heard that last year. Then two days before camp, here comes Steve Nelson. And he essentially never leaves the field. A lot of talk about James Bradbury up the turnpike. If the Giants do pull the trigger and release him, and it looks like they're going to have to release him, how quickly should Howie be on the phone trying to work something out with James Bradbury? Well, I, I think he's probably already done his research, right? I mean, we, you know, when a guy's on the trade block and they've gotten the opportunity to seek out a trade, typically people talk, right? So um, to me it's a matter of price, right? Like when we saw the, the Tyron Matthew uh, price tag of three years, 33 million, I could have, if you would have told me that before, and I was like, there's no way the Eagles are in on that. Like no. maybe 8 million a year, which is what the deal. What I said, be. 8 million. See, yeah. great minds, Jody, great minds. They just don't pay premiums for, for safeties. That's just not something they do. They let Malcolm Jenkins, who was the best safety 
that they'd had since Brian Dawkins leave because they didn't want to pay 11 million. So you think the whole they were close on Marcus Williams thing is BS? No, that's no, so that's a close. completely different story. He's sub 28. So I should have said that. I should have said that. They oh, do not so pay people vet, over veteran 28. guys. Yeah. Over yeah, a certain they do not age. pay okay, people over 28. Got their it. their sweet spot is 26 to 27 off the first contract. Marcus Williams is is a very is an outlier because he is so young still. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think Bradbury is a guy that makes a lot of sense, especially if you can get him long term. Because if you feel like Darius Slay has two more years in him to be to play at a high level, you want that covered. The thing also because you're developing a lot of young guys behind the scenes. I like Zach McPherson. I think that he's a good player, but I also don't think, again, it makes a lot of sense to, to like put all your eggs in one basket on him. I, I think all the flyers that they, they accumulated last year with Kerry Vincent and Tay Gowan and, and Mac McCain. Cool. That's awesome. Good for them. But you, you've got to kind of see them in action. They haven't even had a training camp here yet. These guys are all acquired post training camp. And yeah. They didn't play a lot, so you're still kind of figuring them out. Um, and they were all late round picks. It's not like they were like all of these guys were day three picks or, or an undrafted free agent in Mac McCain's case. So I, I think they need to figure that out this summer. Um, I don't think they need to sign a guy prior to training camp, but I do think they will. Um, a guy that makes a lot of sense to me as a, as kind of an experiment is Kevin King, the former Packers cornerback. Um, he played free safety at Washington, and I always thought that that was a better position for him because he's six foot four, and it's tough. Uh, That's hips. too tall to be a corner. Yeah, it's yeah. tough at corner. Like you know, Richard Sherman's a unicorn, but right. um, he makes sense as a guy. You know, the Eagles like safeties with cornerback backgrounds. He'd make a lot of sense as a free safety, especially if they wanted to move to a more single high. Um, look, now, Jody at- brought up uh, Chris Clark the other day, which. I, you know, because the Ravens got Marcus Williams, they drafted Kyle Hamilton. So if you're looking on the trade market, what do you think of that name? I will tell you this. It's something that the Eagles have explored. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if if it's a doable situation, but it is something that they've looked into for sure. Um, You know, I, I think that when you look at the Eagles know what's going on in safety, like they like I. It's just like, you know, you want Jalen Rager to be part of the team. Like, <laughs> come on, guys. We've been watching how your Roseman operate for over a decade here. Like, wise up. Now, there's certain things that I do think he – I think sometimes how he says stuff that seems ridiculous, but it's actually true, and he knows that his reputation will make you say, no, there's no way that's true. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, but he's very good at his job, and I think – as far as is uh, leaning on the public narrative. And I think, look, I think they will, they're not done. They aren't done. They, that should be, you know, acknowledged. I mean, I said all last year that Steven Nelson made a ton of sense and then they finally pulled the trigger. So, um, you know, I think Kevin King makes a lot of sense. I think Bradbury makes a lot of sense, but you also have to realize that the chiefs have more money um, and they have a need at cornerback. They have like 45 rookies um at the position uh the Bengals could use an upgraded cornerback as well and they have more money and they just are coming off a super bowl so i mean i i I think all right i'm gonna throw another name at you because i just thought of it because you said the Bengals and jonathan gannon history injuries recently trey waynes who's a former first round pick in 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 minnesota I, look, I get the I get the dot connecting with Trey Waynes and Xavier Rhodes. I just like I, I would pit, play the young guys. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just Bear, I agree on Xavier. Xavier's shot, but Trey's a little bit younger. But I don't yeah, know Trey. I mean, look, Trey can play. I would have him compete. I wouldn't sign him for more than three million dollars. But I, I, I think oh yeah, it would be cheap. Completely, I would cheap. prefer King, and I, King's out there. I mean, he's still only like twenty six, so. If you can take a flyer on him, if you can take a flyer on a guy, you always take the flyer on the guy who's under 28. That's that's who, the rule of thumb. Just double checking. Who did Anthony Harris play for before he was an Eagle? Vikings. Vikings. Who did Marcus Epps play for before he was an Eagle? 
Vikings. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we want to go back down the Viking road again. Right. That, Replace that, two that, players that we've already tried that and it hasn't quite delivered the results that we needed. The way the so league let's try works. that again at cornerback. No, I'll I'll pass. John, I, I follow your line of thinking. They did this, they did this, they'll do it again. At some point you go, we did this, we did this. Oh, shoot, the results well, were Well, they love they Marcus. Let's not do that again. They love Marcus, and they like Anthony better than we like Anthony. I'll tell you that. Okay, well. Which I, I mean, <laughs> they like Anthony more than anyone likes Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony's a really good dude. He does oh, great stuff great for the dude. community. Um, great dude. But there were times last season, especially early, where he looked like a linebacker playing corner. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, that was rough. I mean, he got better as the season went on. I thought he closed pretty well. But, like, you know, I thought that they needed a full-on oil change at safety. I thought they would actually bring back McLeod. They ended up going with with Harris. Um, safety's a position, look, that they have not valued. And it's it's abundantly clear. Like, people were upset about the Matthew thing. And it's like... Well, if they really wanted to go after this position, they could have. They had the money to do it. It wasn't like... And they tried with Marcus. They just... Yeah. You know, I mean, look, disciplined. Marcus would have been a completely different... Would would have been a game-changing player for them. Um, so, I mean, Justin Reed, even to that extent, would have been a very good free safety. But money and wins talk and rolls talk. You know, I think when you look at the Ravens and their history of usage with... You know, Harbaugh's been around for a really long time. And their history of usage with the safety position is is very, very, very vivid. Like, they use safeties in all different ways. And so if you're just coming here to play a, a, um, a cover two corner, I mean, a cover two safety, like, wha- why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think the safety yeah. role is that appealing here, frankly. I love your uh, uh, comparison uh, with Harris of a cornerback playing a linebacker playing cornerback. That's well, they could have actually used him as a linebacker because they had that Eric Wilson, who they got from where again? Yeah, that one didn't work. Yeah, yeah, Minnesota. That was, uh, How many that times do we have to guy. go down the Minnesota road is my question. Hey, right, let me, let me put guys, that guys feel comfortable with who they feel comfortable with. Yeah, but that was... That was bad. I that was, that I've was said, worse I've said, said Eric Brown. <laughs> that like was Eric. a really bad one. I said Eric Eric can't play the run. I told everybody day yeah, one. Yeah, you Mike. did. You you pounded that home. All right, one last one. We couldn't play the you. pass either. Well. MK, before we let you go, um, the whole Bradbury thing, from a giant perspective, and he could become available, and yeah, I think he'd be a great fit with the Eagles. They bring the guy in. They pay him what they felt they needed to pay him to get his name on the contract. I thought he played really well. I have to watch the Giants because I do shows in New York, so I put them on tape, and I go back and watch them. I don't know how many times I said here on Birds 365. The Giants only scare me from their secondary position. Nothing else about the Giants scared me last year. Pass rush, linebacker, their entire offense, even though they had so many different wide receivers. I don't like Danny Dimes a little bit, so you got to get it to them. They look good on paper, but you got to be able – they got a real good secondary. And I think that should scare the Eagles a little, and they did. Jason uh, Jalen Hurts had maybe his worst game of the year against that giant secondary. And then Bradbury became an issue and a problem. Was it because the regime changed and the coaching staff and the general manager weren't the ones who gave him the money? I thought he played well for them last year. I don't think his contract is outrageous, yet they've come to loggerheads and they have to move on. What the hell happened with Bradbury and the Giants? Why is he even available? If it were me, I'd be happy to have Bradbury. So they can't even afford their draft class is how bad David Gettleman has set up their, <laughs> their cap situation. They Yes, they inherited two top 10 picks, but they also inherited the worst cap situation in the league. And the new regime does not want to extend or rework contracts the way Howie Roseman has done for years because they're not – their guys and trading him would save ten million dollars, uh, which would pay for their entire rookie class and give them a little bit of a cushion. So, with that said, you know, yes, he is a very good cornerback, but they're also still paying Adoree Jackson. They're, you know, they just drafted Flute from from LSU. They want to bring their type of guys in there 
Um, and I think the thought process is like Bradbury, if they really have to get rid of a player, he's the one. He's the one chip that they had. And teams know that and teams don't want – he's got one year left on his contract. He's not going to resign with the Giants. So why not rip the Band-Aid off now, get the value now? And it's kind of backfired because teams know what's going on. Right. And teams aren't going to trade stuff for him if he's not willing to lower his cap number and extend his deal. And so – Bradbury can kind of figure out where he wants to go or if he wants to go. And I, it's put them in a, it's put a rookie GM in a really tough spot. They've been very transparent about the moving and shaking of James Bradbury. And look, teams have filled holes. The Texans showed interest. They then drafted uh, Stingley and signed Steven Nelson. Um, the chiefs have shown interest. They draft uh, Trent McDuffie. Like, Teams are the only team that really hasn't addressed corner this offseason is the team you guys cover. And that's, you know, that's where everybody's like light bulbs are going off. They have about $10 million in cap space. They're going to get additional cap space back after June 1st. I don't think Bradbury will wait that long. I don't think the leverage is there. Um, but look, I, I think the Eagles should be in on him. If they lose out on him, it's because of the price. I don't think they're not going to have interest in a guy who actually played his best games against the Eagles, like you said, the past two yeah. years. So um, that said, they do have a history of bringing in NFC East guys and those guys just being absolute bust signing. So maybe how he's spooked by that. But I, to me, I think he's More a really Minnesota. good fit. Yeah, let's go yeah. that way. He is Mike K. You see it right there. Follow him on Twitter at Mike underscore E underscore K. Uh, ProFootballNetwork.com, you know how we got to end this, Mike. Lead NFL reporter for Pro Football Network. To me, you're the lead AEW reporter. Uh, I'll, I'll let you say whatever you want about AEW, but please, please tell me we are at the end, the death throes of the Adam Page era as world heavyweight champion. Yeah, that promo yesterday was horrific. Uh, <laughs> that was a really bad promo. Yeah, I don't know really what they're Does trying to do. Not belong there. in that spot. Just not. I look, that I don't guy. think CM Punk moves the needle at all. To me, like in my opinion, he has not done anything for the ring. I I agree, but he's a professional. He'll... Yes, he is a professional. I actually just started watching the show Heels yesterday, and he was great on there. Uh, by the way, uh, stars, uh, I believe. Correct. What uh, stars? Yeah, stars. Uh, Comcast yeah. is doing like their free uh, watchathon weekend. I wouldn't pay yeah. for stars otherwise. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so watching that, um, and they have a character who you'd like, who's basically looks like Edge. Like bas- they, they they basically ha- used Edge as his template for this character. But anyway, yeah, I, look, I I think that it's kind of run its course. Uh, I thought he had some really good matches early on, but it's just like. The work is fine, Mike, but he does. Yeah, he just doesn't seem like a world champion. Yes. And I, I think for a young company, you and you have like forty-five former prof- professional wrestlers, uh, sports entertainers on the market, like on on the marquee. It's just like it's kind of hard when you when you see guys like you know Punk and Danielson and Moxley and and you know Jeff Hardy and all these former like legitimate world champions and you get this guy who is calling himself hangman in 2022 uh carrying a title so um yeah yeah i want uh, want we're on the same uh, page there i want to see orange cassidy get the title ah come on i I would i would have put the title on adam cole Uh, yeah yeah. that well that ship has sailed because uh tony has destroyed adam cole to the point He's gone dark on me because well, I, I think he's, it. Let me say this. <laughs> They're doing an Owen Hart Cup, okay? Yeah. And there's eight guys in it. The only guy that ever wrestled Owen Hart, Jeff Hardy, is in it. He's obviously the oldest guy in it. And he's very clearly going to lose in the first round to Darby Allen, which doesn't make a ton of sense. By the way, did you see his promo yesterday? Oh, my Darby God. Was like, yeah, we're going to have it a good the time. Worst thing it's going to be I've great. I've ever seen in my life, and it might have been ten words. I don't I know think, how you can I do think, that. I think Sting was like, that's all you're going to say? Yeah. Of course, <laughs> I was going to say, Sting didn't quite come to his rescue. No. Yes, he was like, much, yeah, it's going to be terrific. <laughs> it's I, like, I, I, good. It I, was I, like, one quickie, we got to wrap this up. One quickie yeah. AEW question. Sure. They keep using Miro in the opens. 
Yeah, what and is he the deal? He wrestled that? in what six months? He has well, died. I know he has was he? hurt for a while. I think he's healthy now, but he uh, there are hurt. a lot of people that they're just like not using, and I know that a lot of contracts are coming up from like their original signings. Like I, we haven't seen Penelope Ford in like months. No. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I've never been a big Miro guy, so I, I don't. I can't say that I've been like paying but they, attention. To uh, the, the only reason I question is because they use him as part of their open. And oh no, I, I get it. I, I get what you're saying. We don't know if he's ever going to wrestle again. Tony's just, got Tony's got too much to do, man. I could talk of, about that Sting Darby promo for like. Oh my god! I, 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 I can't uh, even. How you can get across in ten words something so horrific? I think it's a talent do, do, in its do, own. So here's what it's like, right? And I thought this like right afterwards. So um, you know when you see like wedding videos or like bar mitzvah videos where somebody's like, oh man, we love you. Congratulations. It's great. You know, like like one of those. That's yeah. what it came off like. I was like, man, I remember that at my bar mitzvah. <laughs> like, we love you. You know, yeah. sort of <laughs> like... Yeah, it's going to be such a great time. Thanks for having us, guys. Like that's that's the way that promo came off. Wow. Yeah. yeah uh, to be better anyway. than that. Yeah. Agreed. Michael K. Always a pleasure, buddy. Thanks for hopping on. Um, feel free to uh, reach out to either of us. Tell us when you're going to be able to pull back the curtain and tell us about the extra eagle stuff that you're lining up right now. No, you can't do it just yet. When you can, we'll certainly have. No, you back we'll know. Time. We'll know. I'll leave that hint. We'll know. All right. You'll All know. Right. I'll keep you in the loop. Yes, please. Guys. Mike, Michael K, Pro Football Network, here with us on Birds 365. All right. Run a little late. We'll come back. We will put a bow on the show. Stay here. Mm-hmm. 